Hello folks, welcome to the huge iMac upgrade Q&A. Yes, I went through all the comments on my website and on the YouTube videos and decided I will create here a list of very frequently asked questions. So maybe you can then benefit from the answers instead of always asking and waiting for a response, which might not, you know, come. Um, because uh, there, now really there have been so many comments and so many people asking a lot of same questions that um, I just don't want to answer them because it's always repetitive the same but also it has been answered so many times and yeah so we do even have a pretty fitting background here currently my 2011 project here that is still waiting for the GPU. So without further ado, let's get into the questions. Question number one, the most frequent asked question by far is, can I use X GPU or X CPU in X iMac? Guys, you can just look at either the video I made or my upgrade guide or the Mac rumors guide. These three will give you the answer because uh, frankly there are so many configurations there are so many model years i just can't remember that at the top of my head so i would also just go to that site and look it up so i stopped responding to those questions because it is literally said in the video where they comment usually but also uh, it has been answered so many times so just look at the website you see all the model years all the emc numbers who identified completely correctly and then you see the supported gpus and cpus um, when it comes to some more exotic cpus i call them some some xeons because people sometimes hey say hey uh, i found this xeon that's supposed to work frankly i don't know guys uh, i wrote some that i know work but i just wouldn't take the risks especially those cpus nowadays they don't cost anything anymore so yeah, why, why take the risk? But hey, if you know it works, then it's good. Next question is, can I put an i5 or an i7 processor into a Core 2 Duo iMac? And that's a no, because those are two completely different sockets. You have the LGA775 socket for the Core 2 Duo, the older socket, and the LGA1156 socket for the i-series CPUs. So, you cannot, cannot, cannot do that. There's, it's incompatible. Um, and it's really confusing because there are some 2009 iMacs, frankly, the, the majority, those are Core 2 Duos, and there are even some with i-series. So I know it's confusing. So yes, you can upgrade those who have the i7, but not the Core 2 Duo. So I'm sorry, you can't do that. Also, there's one person who has asked me this very specific question uh, if he can swap a 2009 i series motherboard into a core to duo 2009 iMac maybe but i can't guarantee you that it works and it's not really worth the hassle in my opinion but anyway it's a cool project if you're watching this tell me if it works or not very frequent question also coming up help I have a black screen on my iMac, what can I do? Black screen usually means graphics card is bad and you can easily figure that out by checking those diagnostic LEDs here. If LED 3 is off, your GPU is not communicating with your iMac. If number 2 is also off, you have a, a power delivery problem which could be related to the motherboard or the power supply. So. Um, Make sure that at least two are on, then you know it's a GPU. Um, if you, you know, upgraded your iMac and the GPU like is supposed to work, but it stays black, still, again, check it and you will see. Um, sometimes it's also that maybe the operating system is screwed up and therefore it can't boot. So maybe try there or something, but it's really hard to troubleshoot that, I know. So just cross fingers, get it ready before upgrading that it has an operating system to boot into and then do the upgrade just to minimize issues. Next very frequent asked question is what GPUs do you recommend me for my iMac? 
And that is a very good question. I would recommend you actually my 765M that I put in because uh, I know now from experience, I've been using it for very long now, it, it works pretty good. It's relatively powerful, especially more powerful than the original GPUs that came with it. And it's reliable and it works great under Mojave on uh, the 27 inch model. So it's also not that expensive. I think it's the sweet spot. But also 770M is good, 780M is good. Just stay away from high power draw cards in the smaller IMAX. So in the 21.5 inch models, do not get like a 780M or something. It will have issues because it's the, the power supply and it is just too weak. But for like the bigger one, 765M. Um, I mean, if you're adventurous, you can also go for the more, you know, different quad rows, but they're supposed to be supported pretty good as well. But I can say from experience, 765M is pretty good. But just look at the Mac Rumors post and check the compatibility and maybe get one which has brightness control support, which has v -Buys available. Just a lot easier with those. And yeah, so yeah, just have to, basically has to, has to depend on your budget and how much power you need. So next question is, what V bias do I need to get for my GPU? That's pretty simple to find out. Just go on the Mac Rumors page, check out the cool table they made, this re really specific table. It's all in detail there and just click the link that's next to it. And then you have the appropriate V bias for your GPU. Simple as that. Also frequently got that question. Can I flash the V bias in a virtual environment? So this virtual box of parallels. No, you cannot do that uh, because you will need it natively since the VM is only, uh, you know, it's be, uh, a GPU is being emulated and it's not the real, you know, so still running on top of Mac OS. So that won't work, unfortunately. You will need Windows. Um, and now we come to before somebody writes it in the comments, oh, that's wrong, you don't need Windows. Do I need Windows for flashing? Not necessarily, you can also do it with Linux. You can create a cool USB flash drive, which it can boot into, and then you can access it, if you put it on the network, of course, uh, you can access it on a, an other computer via SSH, secure shell, and do flashing there. And it's very simple. And if you ever set up a Raspberry Pi or similar, you can do it this way. So yeah, no Windows required for that. Um, do, Another flashing related question is, do I need a specific Windows version for flashing? No, you don't. Uh, I flash mine, for example, on Windows 7, but you can do it easily on Windows 10 or 8, doesn't matter. Just get the appropriate NVIDIA flashing flash tool for 64-bit or 32-bit if you're running a 32-bit Windows for some reason. Will the boot switcher and internet recovery work after flashing? Yes. It will work, but only after flashing, because if you don't flash, you will just see a black screen and until it boots into the US, no signal, nothing. So no boot switcher and no internet recovery. But if you flashed it, then you have it back. And that's pretty handy, obviously. This is also a question I just can't wrap my head around why people ask that. Where do I get my CPUs and GPUs? Well, uh, it's, you know, it's not in the local supermarket that you get those, it's usually online. And um, I would just say eBay, AliExpress, Craigslist, in your country, in, I know in the US, Craigslist is big. But, but just, you know, it, if it is the correct CPU and you see it on Craigslist for super cheap, that's how I got this. I mean, I didn't get it on Craigslist because we don't have that here, but I paid how much for this? Not that much, not expensive. Uh, the cheap use, however, I do recommend getting from maybe an eBay reseller just in case it doesn't work, you can send it back. And if you're adventurous like me, you get it from AliExpress. Um, and I'm still waiting for it, so hopefully it will work, hopefully everything's okay. But there I get my parts from. Um, yeah, apparently not self explanatory, but yeah, this is where I get them from. This is also a question, and it there's a big fuss made about this in the Mac Rumors post. What heatsink do I need for my GPU? Um, I would suggest 
if you have a really really powerful one like an 8 ADM or some really powerful card which I think the majority of people will not have just because there's a price here and it's no relation to the you know machine's value then get maybe an upgraded cooler but yeah maybe if you do some more intensive stuff then just if you're you know feel safer then get an upgraded heatsink but for the most part especially if you have a lower end or mid-range GPU and just stick with a stock one, especially for the quadro ones. Um, just my two cents, but yeah, I know people fight over this topic, it's crazy. Will my external monitor work if I flash my GPU? Yes, it will work. Um, I have not tried it without flashing, um, so it might work, but I guess it won't. Anyway, if you flashed it, yes, it works. What do I do about the loud spinning fan after an SSD upgrade? Uh, this, this, the most simple solution to that is just install a fan control program. Just install Max Fan Control. It's also available for Windows. That works pretty good. I have it uh, installed on the 2010 in, in, uh, back home. And um, it works good. Um, but if you want like a permanent no matter what solution then you can get either get like a freaking expensive adapter from OWC which like tricks it into thinking it has such a, a sensor I don't know how exactly that works um, or I also read you can trick it by using another cable or something but I have never looked into that frankly I just don't care I just install uh, the fan control program and every time it boots into Mac OS it will it will go down in RPM and even when it's booting, it's now down in RPM. So for me, that's not that big of a deal, but it is annoying. Yes, I get why people ask that. It's super annoying. Uh, why did Apple do this? Yeah, Every PC manufacturer can figure that out. But Apple? Uh, no. Um, how do I patch? Mojave or Catalina on my metal upgraded iMac. Pretty simple, guys. Um, you just run the DOS dude patcher, and when you install the patches uh, in the Mojave uh, patcher, you have to do it, you know, uh, during installation. The Catalina one will do it automatically. So in the Catalina patcher, do the, the automatic, automatically patching, deactivate that thing. I don't know what it's called automatic patching or something, just deactivate that. And on both, it's the same thing you have to do. You have to uncheck the legacy video card support because if you leave that checked, it will patch it as if it still has the original in it and therefore won't work correctly. But if you just uncheck that, it will access the metal GPU and everything will be fine. So it's not, not a big hassle. Just uncheck that and that's it really. Should be smooth sailing from there. Uh, speaking of smooth sailing, it should be smooth sailing on Mojave. I can tell from experience, Mojave runs really reliable, really good. And people also ask, has the Catalina issue been fixed? Just recently read that comment. Um, how do I fix that issue? Guys, I'm being honest, I don't know. Um, but I got the fear that it hasn't been fixed. And what I'm talking about is, the black screen, really annoying black screen. Sometimes when you boot it, it would just stay black, no, regardless if you have it patched or not. And it would come back after you do a PRAM, after you do a PRAM reset. And that's really annoying, you know, obviously. Uh, so I, again, I just don't know. I have not tried it out. I might try it out on this one. Let's see if it works. It's a bug, I suppose. But I don't know the, the fix. If you know the fix, just put them in the comments. And about the Wi-Fi fix, uh, there's there's um, this one program which installs a text that's supposed to work. So the Wi-Fi also should be fixed, I guess. But the annoying part, I don't think. People have also asked me this question, either can I bake my existing GPU and fix it, or I have baked my GPU and it is fixed now. Well, guys, it's not fixed. Uh, it's just you extended its life a little bit it can fail and will fail eventually so it's only a temporary fix and so if you got it running again that's great just make sure like maybe save all your important data and such because it can you know fail at any time again 
But I know Give Life means successful, it's just no temporary fix. My GPU is dead, the one I ordered. What do I do? Well, you just send it back. Hopefully you bought it from a seller that <laughs> takes it back. Um, the, that is a big problem. That is, that is a bigger problem than I actually anticipated. Uh, it just turns out that, well, it's kind of obvious, you know, all these cheap use, they're new anymore. They're usually out of laptops, out of Dell Alienware laptops or uh, other computers. They have been used and so they can fail, you know. Um, so it's technology, they're old, they have been used. So yeah, uh, I, just, I just can't say anything other than maybe try to send it back, get another one. Again, I don't know if mine will work fine. I, I cross fingers that it does, but if it doesn't, uh, I can send it back. Uh, it's a lot of wasted time, of course, but yeah, just how it goes with this. What about the cheap use that have a pre-flashed rebias on them? Uh, don't, just don't buy those. I know it's tempting, it's cool. You know, you could put it in, it's just gonna work. Um, I wouldn't risk it. Um, just do the patching yourself. It isn't that hard. And I, I reckon if you take on this project, especially on the 2011, where you have to take out the whole board, you can do the flashy too. So don't stay away from those. What about patching macOS Big Sur? <laughs> I know that Big Sur can be patched using Vansoa's Patched Sur on 2011 iMacs and uh, that's something I will try on that one. And I also know that you can basically run Big Sur uh, as if it was a Hackintosh on also older Macs. So you can run it on 2009 to 2010 iMacs. Also, it's just a lot, lot, lot more work. I have attempted one Hackintosh, one open core Hackintosh. That is, that was my main PC, but it still had issues and uh, I just, didn't feel like doing trying that again. It's just so much time. You really have to configure yourself, everything, and it's a lot of work. So if you want to do this, uh, well, give it a shot. It might work just fine, but then remember, it's it's still a hack Mac OS, and you're basically hackintoshing your existing Mac. That's how it's done. It's cool that it can be done, but it's not for the faint of heart. It's You need to be a little more advanced to do that. So also, it's just a lot of time, so... Hmm. Maybe uh, just stick with the existing ones until they run out of support, which is gonna be a while, so yeah. But Big Sur, I'll try it on this one, for sure. Just, um, I have to get it working first. <laughs> that will take a time. And the last question is, can I swap a 2011 motherboard into a 2010 shell and vice versa? No. Um, I even ran into such a situation where I ordered the wrong motherboard on my 2010. Uh, I needed a new motherboard because the connector was ripped and I bought a 2011 board and it wouldn't fit. First of all, because the 2011 has Thunderbolts and it, this one has Thunderbolt, but the 2010 ones, they don't. And also the internal connectors here are a lot different. The board might look the same, you know, from the layout and everything, but it's a lot different. So no, you can't do that. So you cannot unfortunately convert like a 29 to a 2011. Um, it, it just doesn't work, I'm afraid. Just internal differences are just way too much. So, well, a shame, but can't do that. Even though they look all the same, they're different. So, and that's my uh, big iMac upgrade Q&A. If you still have more questions that are different, then uh, post them below, I'll try to answer them. But as I said in the beginning, I will eventually just, I will stop answering those questions because uh, it's just always the same. You know, I, I do spend a fair amount of time answering these questions and when it's always the same, I, I reckon it's just easier for you and me to, that you just check out this video or the guide. Uh, it's all there, it's all in there, the, the stuff I know. And if you wanna really dive deep into this, Go to the Mac Rumors page. It's like the holy grail of the iMac upgrade. Go there, you will find everything you gotta know about those in this Mac Rumors post. And always a little bit of a mess once you get past the, the table, but that table is very useful. So yeah, that is my video. I'm very looking forward to finishing this uh, and that everything hopefully works out. 
and um, yeah, I'll try to get Big Sur running and it will be my new video editing machine when everything is done. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you later.